All right, hello and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM, joining you as usual from San Diego. And today I'm joined from Atlanta, Georgia by Kevin Harris. How are you doing, Kevin? John, I'm great. I assume it's 75 degrees and sunny as it always is in San Diego. Ah, well, I, I can, for once, I can contradict you and say, actually, it's cloudy, rainy and stormy right here now. We have, um, even luckily in San Diego, I mean, we have about, you know, five or six days of rain every year. And yeah. this year we, we, we voted on having them all together, I think. Ah, uh, well, I'm, so, I'm sorry to bring it up. I hope you'll be okay. Oh, I, th I think we'll survive. Uh, I grew up in Ireland, so to be honest, uh, five days. Feeling of home. That's right. Is, um, it does. It brings it back. It's better than 364 and a half days of rain. So. That's right. Um, and Kevin, uh, you're the president of Radical Mentoring, and you set vision and strategy for the company and serving as an evangelist to new audiences. And what we're going to talk today about is the best mentors aren't who you might think they are. So, uh, so Kevin, I mean, you've obviously uh, been a mentoring a long time, and this is what you do. So typically, when people look for mentors, they say, okay, let me pick somebody who's really, really successful, who's done it all, and try to get them as, as, as the mentor. So tell me why that isn't always the best choice. Well, John, great question. I think, you know, oftentimes, it, it, you may have read kind of the millionaire next door kind of mentality that sometimes we look at the veneer and the surface and we sort of make our judgments about who the right mentor is based on the house they live in, the car they drive, the neighborhood, um, how shiny their shoes are, whatever, whatever kind of your qualifications might be. And not to say those guys aren't great mentors, many of them are, but sometimes you've got to, you kind of have to look a little deeper to find two things. Number one, a, a person who's got a dynamic story to tell, but the other part of it is somebody who's willing to share that story and invest that time with you so that you can learn from the mistakes. You may not want the guy who's gonna tell you the formula for success. You want the guy who's gonna ask you great questions, who's willing to take the time to really lean into your relationship and understand your perspective and how best to engage with you at exactly where you are. Yeah, no, I think that's I think that's a great point because let's face it, sometimes the the highly you know, successful person they're also quite far removed from maybe where you are today, and as you know, as humans, we tend to look we tend to look backwards with rose tinted glasses, right? So maybe yeah. some of the advice that you're getting from that person it may be good solid advice, but it just may not be applicable to where you are today. You got it. I think that. It's, it, a lot of it does revolve right back to that story. And I do think, you know, we do sometimes want to take a couple extra steps and we may look up to want to spend time with, with you, John, as a, as a great sales leader. But there may be other people that may be one step or two steps ahead of me that can share a little bit of the successes along the way. And you, as a sales leader, may not be transparent and vulnerable enough to help coach me along the way. You may look at the relationship as you as the leader not willing to share some of the warts and the bruises that you've experienced to get to where you are and it takes a unique personality who's willing to just air their dirty laundry if you will open up a little bit more and say hey what you're seeing here may not be exactly what um what you think it is there there's some shrapnel in the background there's some bodies that have been you know left in the wake behind me that um i, I need you to understand sort of a little bit more about who i am first versus what yeah, no, I think that I think that's a great, great point, uh, Kevin. Because I I do think the other part is, if somebody is a, you know, high level, successful person, you know, they may have their own insecurities and stuff like that that they're, as you said, they're not comfortable in really sharing because you've already reached out to them because they say, oh, Kevin, like you're hugely successful and that's why I want you to mentor me. Well, that could put you in a kind of weird position too because if you say yes, I am, but you know, I have my own doubts and things are. It, uh, you know, it kind of may confuse the dynamic, but I love what you said there about looking for people who may be two or three steps ahead of you, not like 400 steps ahead of you. Right. Yeah, I just think there's a there's value in a little bit of that kind of sh short term perspective, too, versus, you know, yes, we need to have our one and five and 10 year goals and we can kind of lay out that beautiful strategy like many of us have probably done to start this new year. but. 
to be able to look ahead a little bit shorter and go, you know what, I'm at this position now and I can see this as being next position for me. How can I work my way into that position or understand what that position is like or understand who the person is that's in that kind of a position? I think it's just a really, really valuable way to, to learn and, and keep perspective. And then what are some of the things when, when you, uh, when you uh, advise people on, on mentoring, what are some of the areas uh, that people should look to for mentoring? Because I think sometimes they just mentoring is just this kind of catch all and they think, oh, I'll just find some, as we said, we'll just find somebody who's successful and they can mentor me to be successful. Um, but that's a little bit vague, isn't it? Yeah, it is. I, th I think what we, what we sort of ascribe to with our organization is helping people understand the power of group mentoring. I think, you know, most people think mentoring is this one-on-one -on -one relationship, John, you and me sitting at a Starbucks sort of staring at each other and you're hoping I've got something to talk about and I'm hoping you've got something to talk about. And those relationships, you know, they will rise and fall based on just the ability and the willingness to engage. So we really ascribe to this idea that if you can get somebody further ahead and then a group of younger guys behind it or younger women behind it, they meet in, in a loosely structured environment. It creates this beautiful platform for the, for the relational um, strength to increase, therefore the vulnerability and the transparency begins to unfold. And then you've got some peer-to-peer -peer dynamics that are happening as well as somebody who's ahead kind of talking, behind, talking about those experiences to help shape what it might look like for somebody else. And, and in that in that scenario that you talk about there, you have also now created greater levels of accountability because obviously if you're just accountable to one person, you can come up with a load of excuses. But if yeah. you're accountable now to a group of people around you, well, then it gets a little harder. Yeah, there's a, there's a guy that, who I love and respect out in San Diego named Bob Goff. And Bob says, don't hold me accountable, hold me close. And that accountability, to your point, is I, I can tell you whatever I, you, I think you want to hear so that you don't ask me the next tough question. But if you and I are relationally close, then you will sniff through that line that I'm trying to feed you. And I have a, I have a real heart for men. And that's it's one of the greatest challenges men face is I don't want to lift you in too close because if, if I do, then you're going to figure out I'm not all that I'm, I, I'm dressed up looking like. So I love that idea. You're right. Accountability is only as good as the data that you get in that. So why, uh, so um, when you were, when you were looking and, and looking to pick out, uh, to pick out mentors, what, one of the things is, I guess a lot of people don't know even now how to ask someone to be a mentor or ask a group of people to be mentors. Yeah. So what we've, we, we try to take some of the guesswork out of it. So what we've kind of created for folks is an application process. So in, in our model, we think it, it almost starts with the mentor. So we've got to start with the guy who sort of looks behind him and sees others who are those steps behind and is willing and says, hey, I just really want to invest in this group of guys. So I'm going to open up my calendar. I'm going to open up my home. I'm going to open up my heart. I'm going to open up my soul to this group of men. But in order for them to get access to me, I'm going to ask them to apply to be a part of it so that they know what I'm asking of them. So I'm asking them to share their stories. I'm asking them to read books and do some different homework assignments that will help them relationally and spiritually and vocationally. So we really think that it, it starts with mentor first so that then the man, mentor can look behind and, and bring others along with them. Yeah, no, I think that's I think that's really good because, I mean, there there may be there may be a lot of people willing to be mentors, but what you just outlined there is an actual framework and how to be a mentor. And I'm not sure everybody understands that. I mean, if somebody reaches out and says, oh, will you be a mentor to me? And you know, you're a decent person. You'll probably say, yeah, sure. But you haven't really got a clue what that means. You got it. And the reality is if one guy is asking me to mentor him, more than likely I'm having that question asked of me multiple times. And so I love this quote from a guy by the name of Steve, uh, excuse me, Tim Elmore. I gave him the name of Steve, Tim Elmore, who says, more time with fewer people is a greater kingdom impact. More time with fewer people. So rather than be the guy that is meeting one-on-one -on -one in every Starbucks or, or in Atlanta, every Waffle House all around town and sort of pouring his life into one guy, and all of a sudden you look up and you realize there's three seats around the table that aren't taken, but I'm going to be right back here next week helping 
somebody else with a work problem, a marriage problem, a relational problem, if I, as the mentor, think about my time and the value of that time, why not go to those six or seven guys who are asking me the same question and say, hey, I want to take you through a really intentional process where I can leverage my time and experience and pour it into each one of you collectively as a group. We'll get some one-on-one -on -one mentoring is built into that process, but it really is the magic of the group. Because typically, if I'm being asked to mentor by one, I'm being asked to mentor by by many because it's, it, it's there's something in, in my DNA, your DNA, I'm sure, that people are drawn to that and they want to spend that time. Mm -hmm. um, and just to repeat that quote for me again that you said at the beginning. Yeah, yeah. Our, the quote would be, more time with fewer people is a greater, in, in our case, kingdom impact from the spiritual perspective. We, I view it as an opportunity to impact the kingdom more broadly, but it applies across the board. More time with fewer people will give you a greater impact. Yeah, and, and I just wanted to underline that because I think that's so profound in many ways because we live in this strange culture today that's been... Uh, you know, the social media one, they're having tons of friends, having tons of likes, uh, total exposure. The more, the more friends you have, the, the greater person you are. But, it, but and we've lost, we've lost sight of, of quality. Of, and what yeah. you just said there, that the, the fewer is, is much better than the more, you know, the less is more kind of thing. And I think we've yeah. lost kind of sight of that. Yeah, we are more connected yet more isolated than ever yeah. before. And especially for men, we don't, you know, I like to talk about, do you have a 3 a.m. friend or you know, some people say, who are going to be the pallbearers at the funeral kind of, who are the few that know the last 10% of you, that the, the few people that you know, know you so well that they will see you recognize something going on and ask you hard questions. You can't do that with a thousand followers, but if you have a handful of people that are like that in your life, remarkable things will happen because you're fully known, and that's an important part of the problem. Yeah, no, I, I totally agree. And by the way, I love that it's 3 a.m. That's the one we, uh, we always use uh, to, to say, um, if, you, if you broke down on the freeway at 3 a.m. and you called, who, what person could you call that would get out of bed and come and collect you? you and if it. you don't, and if, and if you say, well, I could have, uh, no, they probably wouldn't, or right. no, they probably would, then you have, to, you have to question the quality of the relationships you've surrounded you yourself it. with. The, the AAA guy is not your friend. <laughs> exactly. Um, so the other thing is, uh, uh, so mentoring uh, and getting involved in that. So it also, uh, it also requires a level of self-accountability, right? That if you're yeah. going to engage in this, if you're going to have somebody invest time in you, then you, there's a certain kind of contract there, isn't there, that you're going to implement and take on board and actually do the work. You got it. It is. You know, if I'm going to be asking of, you know, right now I've got a group of mentees that I'm spending time with. If I'm asking them to read books and do these homework assignments, I better be doing them myself because they're going to figure out real quick that I am trying to talk to them from a position of authority, but I haven't done the work that allows me to have that authority position. And so it does. It's sort of, you know, it's a little bit of you get in what you, you put in and I'll give you 100% of me if you're willing to give me, you know, the, the effort that And just then, uh, quickly, can you give me an example of a couple of types of mentors that maybe people wouldn't necessarily immediately think of, but they could be very powerful? Yeah, it may be, um, you know, those that are in kind of faith community, maybe a, a pastor, a person that um, maybe has a, has a well-rounded view. Um, we, we hear of men who are empty nesters and, you know, their, their couplehood has just entered an empty nest phase. And this guy sitting there with this massive heart to want to look back and help other guys who were about to enter that space and help them understand some of the pitfalls that come in that. So it's it's really less about the type of person and some of the DNA of that person. It may just be the person that asks you great questions. And when you pass them in the hallway or at the water cooler, you can tell that there's something inside of them that they intentionally want to know how you are and how you're doing. They're not going to settle for, I'm doing fine, you know, whatever the, whatever the language of the day is. And so it really is less about what the person looks like, but how that person is hardwired. And most people will recognize that if they're kind of seeking that kind of 
almost more broad mentoring versus just this, you know, business of business kind of mind mentoring. Yeah, no, and I, and I love that idea because there are lots of things that we go through in life that are brand new experiences to us. You mentioned a great one there, maybe for an empty nest or maybe your kids are gone for the first time and and you're faced with a situation that you never and anticipated or that you're not prepared for. So finding somebody who can help you through that experience. And I think that's a beautiful thing. What you just, what you outlined is that there are all these different types of experiences that we have in life, but you could find the right mentor for that. And the amazing thing is, for the mentors that hear this, most of those experiences are pretty numb to you at this point. For you, it may just be a thing that happened or an event that happened that for you feels really neutral, but for somebody who's a step or two or a season of life or two behind you, that you know meaningless event that you've sort of put that definition on may be the most valuable piece of information that somebody behind you may need. So mm -hmm. it is less about it's less about kind of your you know your life story and whether or not you think it's valuable. The reality is somebody needs to hear your story. Somebody needs to know that perspective because it could change everything. Yeah, listen, I, I think that's fantastic having a great place to to finish here on. Uh, and to all those people out there, think of all the different experiences that you've had that, as you said, you know, maybe are may, maybe you're numb to it now, but they could be so invaluable to someone else. And also, if you're going through something right now, instead, of, you know, you don't always need to think of I have to get a, a mentor who's like a huge success to give me broad mentoring, I can go and find individuals with the, the experience that I'm going through right now and they can help me through this. So it's it's like that stepped approach as opposed to, yeah. you know, this massive big goal on a hill is like, like find the right mentors for the right steps. Perfect. Listen, this is great, uh, Kevin. All of Kevin's information is going to be below this video. But before we go, do take a moment, Kevin, to tell people a little bit more about yourself and what you do. Yeah, so uh, our organization, I'm president of a group called Radical Mentoring, where we really do as you described at the beginning. We want to equip and encourage people who have a heart for their life and to others. We want to give them a process that helps them do that. I uh, I was personally impacted by this in 2002 when I was mentored by our founder. And um, about, gosh, six years, five years ago now, he asked me to join him and, and help really start to engage this mission and get it out into the hands of more and more people. So you can find us at radicalmentoring.com to get all the information you need and all the contact information right there. Fantastic. Listen, thanks again, Kevin. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop Online Sales Magazine and Pipeliner CRM. I will see you all for another expert interview really soon. Thank you. Yeah.